So now let's work with radicals. And let's start with the definition of a root. If n is any positive integer, and by the way, the index on a radical does have to be 2 or larger. You uh, can't have 1 as an index, not a radical. Uh, then if we were to have some root of some value, and that was equal to some number, if I were to raise that number, the, index, the, uh, the root of some number, to that same value as an exponent, of course I have to do it to the other side, the, index, the uh, radical and the exponent would cancel, and that means that this value, the value inside the radical, would be equal to this value raised to a power. Right? So we can use exponents to simplify radicals, radicals to simplify exponents if we have an equation that we're trying to solve. Let's look at some properties of radicals. Right? So the product of a root is the root of a product, excuse me, I should say, the root of a product is the same as the product of the roots. And you have this all in your notes already. So if I have uh, the cube root of negative 8 times 27, well, I could multiply them together, but that might, I don't know what the cube root of that product would be, but I do know the cube root of each of the individual terms. This would be a lot easier to simplify as the cube root of negative 8 times the cube root of, oops, what happened to my cube root? times the cube root of 27. Because the cube root is just saying, what do I have to multiply by itself three times to get negative 8? We saw that in the last lesson. That was negative 2. And what do I have to multiply by itself three times to get 27? Well, that's just 3. So that's pretty easy to figure out. It might take me a little longer to figure out what the product was, cube root of the product. But if I can take the, pro the cube root of each of the individual terms in the product, that's a little easier. If we have the, um, the root of a quotient, that is the same as the quotient of, the, of the, um, the quotient of each of the individual radicals. Right? So um, if I have the fourth root of, of 1681st, that's the same as the fourth root of 16 divided by the fourth root of 81. I can split that up. Boy, that 4 is looking really big. That looks like 4 times. Now, if 16 and 81 were reducible, I'd want to reduce first just to have smaller numbers take the roots of. But they are not reducible. They don't have anything in common. Uh, they have no common factors. So the fourth root of 16, what times itself 4 times is 16? That's 2. What times itself 4 times is 81? That's 3. So the fourth root of 1681st is the same as the fourth root of 16 divided by the fourth root of 81. Here we have uh, two radicals. We have the square root of the cube root of 729. If we were to raise something with a power to a power, we would multiply exponents. We're going to do the same thing with um, the indexes on the radical. So if you have um, the root of a root, right, you can just make it the root of that product of the indexes. So it's understood it's not written, and we don't typically write in the square the 2 for the square, but it's understood that that's a 2. So the square root of the cube root of 729 is the same as 7, the 729 with the index on the radical being 2 times 3. And of course that would be the 6 root of 729 which is actually pretty easy to figure out. Um, now, 
Uh, I'll show you that, that. Yet, that is really true. So what times itself three times is 729? After you work with powers of three for a while, you start to remember them. So the sixth root of 729 is three. Um, now, if we think about it, 729 is also a perfect cube. Nine times nine is 81. 81 times nine, so eight times nine would be 72. One times nine would be nine. So this is the same as the square root of nine. Because the, I don't know why I put the two in there. Because the cube root of 729 does happen to be 9. So if it was a perfect cube, you could also do the square root of 9, which is indeed 3. So just a little proof there of that. All right, so notice if the, um, if we have an exponent and in the index on the radical is exactly the same, those two are going to cancel it out. It's going to be whatever's in the, uh, under the radical, if the um, index and the exponent are both odd. So three is an odd number. So I'm go I am going to have, if I take the odd root of a negative, I am going to have a negative. So the cube root of negative 5 cubed is just negative 5, because the exponent and the index are going to cancel themselves out. If, however, it's positive, excuse me, if, however, it's, if the exponent and radical are even, then it's going to be a positive number, right? Because if I raise negative 3 to the fourth power, I'm having an e I have an even number of negatives. That's going to be a positive. And the fourth root of 81 is positive 3. So if it, ha doesn't, if it doesn't matter what the sign is, if you have an even exponent, then this is going to be a positive number. So it's going to be the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3. So all this is saying is that the index, the index, I'll put the index first, the index and exponent cancel, no room to write. cancel each other out. But watch the signs. Right, and you have all of this in your notes already. So let's get rid of that. Oop. Does it want to go away? It will if I come over here. And there you go. You have all that in your notes already. Right. So um, this one just gave you a little extra. They gave you a little extra stuff here to showing you that. Oh, this said, no, it's another example. Oh, I don't have that example in my notes. That's all. So that one had. A, if you have a second example, I don't have. The, I didn't put that one in your note in my notes. But I put the rest in there. So here, the doesn't matter if so if it's pause if it's an odd number of x if, if uh, try it again if the index and the exponent are odd numbers then whatever the base is 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 going to be it's going to be whatever the base so your answer is going to be whatever the base is right. Uh, does, if it's negative, you're going to have a negative answer. If the base is positive, you're going to have a positive answer. Um, but if the index and exponent are even numbers, doesn't matter what the base is, it's going to be the absolute value of the base. Right? So they have an, a second example there that I didn't include. And if you have questions, let me know. So let's simplify this. All right, so we're simplifying expressions involving nth roots. So I want the cube root of x to the fourth. I could think of x to the fourth as the cube. I, 
as q, uh, the cube root of x cubed times x, right? Um, I could think of it as the cube root of x times x times x times x, x times x times x times x, but I want to group three of them together. So this is the same as the cube root of x cubed times the cube root of x. Notice the exponent and the rad index on the radical are the same. They would cancel each other out. So this is going to be, so the cube root of x cubed is just x. And then you really can't do anything with the cube root of x. Let's look at the second one there. We can think of, we can separate each of these. We can think of this as the fourth root of 81 times the fourth root of x to the eighth times the fourth root of y to the fourth. If you like, you can also think of this one here as the fourth root of x to the fourth times the fourth root of x to the fourth. I won't rewrite the other ones again. All right, the fourth root of 81, and you can also think of the fourth root of 81 as the fourth root of 3 to the fourth, because 81 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So you can see that in all these cases, the index and the radical are going to cancel. Not that you would have to write this out like this each time, right? Um, but just to see, and I'll show you a quick way as well. So the index on the radical and the exponent canceled. That's just a 3. And the same thing on the next one, right? The two 4s would cancel. That's just an x. It's already positive, so I don't have to worry about the absolute value. Another x. And then the index and the exponent cancel because they're the same. So this is 3x squared times y. Now, another way you can think of this, and just kind of do it faster, right? So the so fourth root of 81 is 3, right? The fourth root, so I've got x to the eighth. I need four x's to take a fourth root. I've got two groups of x to the fourth. That means coming out would be x squared. And then y, the fourth root of y to the fourth would just be y. So you can do it in your head and quicker. But four notes, just so that you can see the properties, we'll do them a little bit longer. All right, so rational exponents, right, a topic that was dropped from last semester, if, you, if you're if watching this in the year 2021, um, um, and an important concept, and not too difficult to work with. So we can rewrite radicals as rational exponents. And we can go the other way. We can write rational exponents as radicals. This is all in your notes. I'm going to show you a quick way to think of it. So if you have, let's just say that the index on the radical is an n. And um, I'll make this a x. Oh, okay, I'll just keep their a. Oh, you have it over here. All right, so if you have the, um, then your exponent is an m. When you rewrite these, it's always going to be power over root. So that's how you can think of it quickly. All right? So if I have, sometimes students get confused, which is if I have a radical with an exponent, which is in the numerator and which is in the denominator, the power is always in the numerator. The root is always in the denominator. So the um, nth root of a to the m is going to be a to the m minus n power, excuse me, m divided by n power. All right, so, and then we can also go the other direction, right? So if I have um, a to the m divided by n power, what's in the numerator is always the power, it's always the exponent. What's in the denominator is always the root. 
right? So 4 to the 1 half power is the square root of 4 to the first power because what's in the numerator is the powers, the exponent, and what's in the denominator is the root, right? Now, we don't typically write 1 as an exponent, and we don't typically write an index of 2. So this is just the square root of 4, which we could simplify as 2. 8 to the 2 thirds power, right, the 2, the numerator is the, is the power. The 4, the, the denominator, is the index on the radical. So this is the Q root of 8 squared. Now, 8 does happen to be a perfect cube. So I could, if I want to simplify this, I could rewrite this as, or I could square it first. It really doesn't make a difference. I actually, you know what? I'll square first because if 8's a perfect cube, uh, it does happen to work out that in this case that 8 squared is also a perfect cube. So the cube root of 64 is going to be just 4 if I want to simplify it. Alright, so the last one there, 125 to the negative one-third power. The negative one is the power, that's the exponent. The denominator, the three, is the root. So this is the cube root of 125 to the negative one power. Now, the index on a radical can never be negative, so that negative does have to go with the exponent. Remember, if you have a negative exponent, you just need to make out with the reciprocal. So this is the cube root of 1 over 1 25th. I can take the cube root of 1, which is 1, and the cube root of 1 25 is 5. So this is 1 5th. And there you go. Some more examples. So now when we work with radical, uh, radical functions, you won't be confused if you see rational exponents. And if we start working with terms that have rational exponents, or if perhaps even factoring rational exponents, you won't be confused as to what those things are. All right, so let's use the laws of exponents with rational exponents, because it doesn't matter what kind of exponent you are, the same, prop same laws apply, right? So uh, if I have a base, I have a product, of like bases raised to a power, we add the exponents. So to multiply like bases raised to a power, add the exponents. So a to the one third times a to the seven thirds would be a to the one third plus seven thirds. That is a to the eight thirds. You can leave it like that. It does happen to also equal, since we were learning how to rewrite these, it's also the same as the cube root of a to the eighth power, which we could simplify, right? Right? Because um, this would be the same as a cubed times a cubed times a squared, right? Eight factors of a. But we'll just leave it like that. It's not that important that we simplify that. We're more just working with laws of exponents. All right, so a to the two-fifths times a to the seven-fifths time divided by a to the three-fifths. If you're multiplying like bases raised to a power, you add the exponent. So a to the two-fifths plus seven-fifths. If you're dividing like bases raised to a power, you subtract the exponents. I couldn't do this all at once because it's just one base. Two-fifths plus seven-fifths is going to give us nine-fifths. Minus three-fifths is going to be six-fifths, so a to the six-fifths power. Just to practice rewriting this, we also could write that as the fifth root of a to the six. That could be simplified, um, but we won't worry about that. There we go. All right, if we raise something with a power to a power, Right, we're going to raise each of the terms in that product, only a product or a quotient, to the power. So we have 
2 to the 3 halves power. Not really much you can do with that. I mean, you could make that the, well, we'll sim maybe we'll simplify that. Maybe we'll rewrite that and simplify it. Oh, no, it won't simplify because that would be, oh, yes, it will. It would be the square root of 8. We could simplify the square root of 2 cubed or 8. Um, a cubed raised to the 3 halves power would be a cubed. Uh, and when if we're, if we're raising it to the 3 halves power, I'll just rewrite that. That would be the same as a to the 3 times 3 halves power. And b to the 4th raised to the 3 halves power would be b to the 4 times 3 halves power. All right, so let's simplify that. Um, so we could rewrite this as the square root, because the index is in the denominator, of 2 cubed. 3 times 3 halves, that's, if this helps, you can make that a 1. Oops. You can put a 1 in the denominator. This is just 9 halves. And that would be b to the 12 halves. Well, 12 halves is 6. All right, so if we want, we can leave it like that. Or we could simplify. So if you don't want 2 to the 3 halves power. Actually, you know what? We'll probably leave it. I'll just leave it over here. But maybe just to review, that would be the same as the square root of 2 cubed times the square root of a to the ninth power times b to the 6. Just to practice simplifying one of them, I've got three factors of 2. Right? This is 2 times 2 times 2. I need, I need two factors, right? Remember simplifying uh, radicals in geometry? 1, 2 comes out, 1, 2 goes away. So I could rewrite 2 cubed as 2 square roots of 2. The same thing with a to the ninth. This is a squared times a squared times a squared times a squared times a. All right, so f the square root of a squared would be a, and I've got four of them, so I could write that as a to the fourth. One little a has no buddy, so he would stay in the radical, and b to the sixth is not in a radical. So we could simplify this as 2a to the 4th, b to the 6th. And we could combine those two things in the radical since they're both square root. Oops, excuse me. Yes, they are both square roots. That 4 there is an exponent, not an index on the radical. So we've got two, the square root of 2 times the square root of a is the square root of 2a. So we'll just simplify this one here and no others. Practice rewriting the others, but we won't bother simplifying. We did simplify the 1 just to practice that. Let's do the last one here. Uh, we do have to cube first. So this would be 2 cubed times x to the 3 fourths. So for cubing x to the 3 fourths, that means we need, oops, so much for my, my parentheses there. Right, that means we're going to multiply that by 3. In the denominator, we've got y to the 1 -third. That's the same as the cube root. And of course, the cube and the cube root are going to cancel each other out because 1 -third times 3 is just 1. A third of 3 is 1. And then times y to the 4th. Let's go ahead and simplify that x. 
right? I've got x to the negative one half power, right? If you've got a negative exponent, you're on the wrong side of the fraction bar. You should be in the numerator. So we have nothing in the denominator. Well, if you'd like, you can put a 1 there. All right, so now let's take care of those exponents. So we've got 2. Let's just take care of the 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8. X, uh, 3 fourths times 3 is going to be 9 fourths. So that's x to the 9 fourths power. And like I said, 1 third times 3 is just 1. So we have y times x to the 1 half y to the 4th. So when we, this is a 9. It looks a little like an 8, doesn't it? There. When we um, multiply like bases raised to a power, we add the exponents. We are going to need a common denominator there. So this is equal to 8 times x to the 9 fourths plus 1 half is the same as 2 fourths times, if we're dividing y to the 4th by y, because 1's in the numerator, 1's in the denominator, that's the same as y to the 4 minus 1 power. So we're, not, we're just going to simplify this. This is going to be x, or excuse me, 8 times x to the 9 halves, um, 9 fourths plus 2 fourths is 11 fourths. And y cubed. And we're going to leave it like that. We're not going to rewrite it or simplify it. All right. So a little practice there with um, those laws of exponents, but this time with rational exponents. Because it doesn't matter what kind of exponents, the same laws will apply. And we can, re we can leave it as is, as a rational exponent, component, or we can rewrite it and simplify it. Right? Either is fine. The only thing we don't want is we don't want negative exponents. Uh, this is our last, yep, that's our last thing. We're going to just rationalize denominators. All right, so you want to, to rationalize denominators, you want the denominator to be, in this case, a perfect square or a perfect cube or a perfect seventh root, right? So if it's a perfect square, I need two factors. So I can't have just one square root of 3. I need two square roots of 3. If you do it to the denominator, you have to do it to the numerator so that it balances. Because multiplying by something over itself is just like multiplying by 1. So if I want to multiply the denominator by the square root of 3, I've got to multiply the numerator by the square root of 3. All right, so in the numerator, we have two square roots of 3. In the denominator, you can either think of it as the square root of 9, or you could think of it as the square root of 3 squared. The index and the exponent match. They cancel themselves out. So this is just two square roots of 3 over 3, however you want to think of it. Now, for a cube root, I, one, two, square, uh, two factors of 5 uh, is not going to be enough. I need 3, right? So I need the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 5. I need 3 of them, right? Because it takes 3 factors to take a cube root. Now, if I want to multiply by 2 factors of the cube root of 5 in the denominator, I have to do the same thing in the numerator. So 1, which I really don't need to write again, times the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 5. So the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 5 is the same as the cube root of 25. Not doing anything with that. I could think of the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 5 as the cube root of 5 cubed. And remember, the exponent and the index, if they match, will cancel each other out. This is the cube root of 25 divided by 5. 
All right, so I'm going to first rewrite this. I'm going to split that quotient up. This is the seventh root of the numerator, which is 1, divided by the seventh root of a squared. Now, the seventh root of 1 is just 1. We'll simplify that later on. Um, but I, ha I want to rationalize the denominator. And I have two factors of a. I need seven factors. So if I've already got two factors, I'm going to need five more. All right, so now I've got seven factors. If I do that to the denominator, I have to do that to the numerator. So the, this is going to be, I'll put, I'll put this in parentheses, uh, times the seventh root of a to the fifth power in the numerator. The seventh power of 1 is 1, and anything times 1 is just itself. So this is going to be the seventh power of a to the fifth power in the numerator. In the denominator, a squared times a to the fifth, I can add the exponents, that's a to the 2 plus 5 power, or a to the seventh power. I've got the seventh root of a to the seventh. The exponent and the index will cancel, cancel each other out. This is the seventh root of a to the fifth divided by a. And there we go, no radicals in the denominator. All right, sometimes it's important to get rid of those, and here's how you do it. All right, so if you have, I'm going to have you guys do some problems, and if you have any questions, let me know. I can always do more examples. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.